Welcome, everyone. We have arrived at the third act of this great liturgical drama of the sacred tritium. That sacred time in the year when the church remembers the paschal mystery, the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Three days that changed everything, everywhere, for all time. And we are here to celebrate that. On Monday, Thursday, we thought about that theological virtue of love as Jesus encouraged his disciples to love each other as he loved them. And then yesterday, we thought of faith, that theological virtue of which Christ is the example and the source and the focus of our faith. Today, we turn to hope. Now, hope seems like such a small word and a word we use so trivially. If you're a sports fan, at the beginning of the season, you start out with a new sense of hope. But just think of how many times that kind of hope was dashed, sometimes even before the All-Star game. Or maybe some of you buy a lottery ticket. You hope, you hope to win the big one. And wouldn't that be wonderful if you could Take care of any debts you might have. You might treat loved ones. You might even leave a sizable donation to St. Barnabas. But eventually, researchers tell us that initial joy that people feel with winning the big one, that happiness they have, you ask them a year later, they're no happier than they were before they won the lottery. You see, those kinds of hopes are based on kind of material things or kind of earthly events that might happen that we hope for. Or we might say we hope that the doctor's report comes back well. A worthy hope to continue to live out this precious gift of life that God has given us. But truth be told, at some point, each of us will get the doctor's report. Mr. Munlock, the coroner says, you're dead. That hope is finite. The hope that we proclaim at the Easter Vigil, the hope that shouts from the empty tomb of Jesus and has echoed down through his followers, from generation to generation is that we have a hope that we are now and forever will be in the very presence of God and of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the hope that gets us to ring the bells during the Gloria. That's the hope that inspires that wonderful rendition of the exultet. That is why we recall God's faithfulness in those ancient stories, because that recollection 
that looking back and seeing God's faithfulness is what springs us forward into the future. Hope is always expressed into the future. It's not a promise that tomorrow is going to be rosy, that suffering is all over. But that creation story reminds us that God made everything and it was very good. And that feeds our hope that God is continuing in the new creation, reconciling all things to himself. When those rough times come, what can we do to reclaim the hope that we proclaim tonight? Two suggestions, both of which are probably things you are doing already. But just to remind you to look for hope as you do them. Whenever we gather for the Eucharist, when we gather together with this community we love and are reinforced in our own intentions to love each other as Christ loved us, as we recite the creed together and proclaim our faith, our trust, that God has been faithful and will continue to be so. When Christ reminds us that he is with us until the end of time, as that bread is placed in our hand, the blessed sacrament, and we receive the cup of salvation, that reignites our hope. The other, so, so come to Mass often. Be together as a community of faith that shares this good news. Have your hope restored. That this all has a vast and eternal meaning and purpose. And in between those times when you were at Mass, I offer the prayer that Jesus gave us, the Lord's Prayer. I suggest before you put your feet on the ground from your bed, you pray the Lord's Prayer. In so doing, reminding yourself that you are God's child, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. You are urging God to fulfill the promise that he has signed, the deal he has struck tonight. And when you say that, give us this day our daily bread. That will put things back into perspective in terms of those material things. They are important. And we work that all might be fed. But they aren't the main thing. So that Lord's Prayer reminds you of the hope that is greater than earthly things, earthly events. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That reminder that this Paschal mystery has happened 
and continues to unfold where Christ has, off, has offered himself that we might be forgiven. And we, as the body of Christ in the world, can forgive others. And just to, when it's hard to forgive, just to remind yourself, if God died to forgive everyone, what the heck am I doing not forgiving them? How feeble is that? They are forgiven by God Almighty. Why would they even care if I haven't forgiven them? It puts things in, into a different perspective. Deliver us from evil. Save us from the time of trial. Those tough things are going to happen. But God sees us through, as he saw the ancient Israelites through the, through the, across the sea when the Pharaoh, the evil, was following them. So Christ, our Passover, delivers us. For thine is the kingdom, present tense, and now and forever. And we, we are children of the king. So we celebrate this night the Paschal mystery. We give thanks for the hope that it instills in us. And as we take part in the Eucharist, we receive the bread of eternal life. Tonight is surely a night to celebrate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.